Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this quick little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at the material editor in Maya. Just a quick introduction to the basics of it. This is Maya, the Maya interface. This is a particular model. It's an old game model that was never used. So I thought I'd go ahead and use it for this. It's a good presentation model, I think. Let's go ahead and get to our Hypershade, or our Material Editor. In 3D Studio Max, it's Material Editor. In Maya, it's Hypershade. To access the Hypershade, you can go to Window, Rendering Editors, and, oops, Rendering Editor, and Hypershade. That brings up our Hypershade, okay? This is basically the materials in our scene. You can also, if you have a custom shelf, in which I do, I've actually created a, a shortcut for that, and that's just this, the HSHD. So I can just click on that, and it brings it up automatically. Okay. Now, it looks kind of complicated, but it's really kind of not. Uh, you just have to kind of pay attention to what you're trying to look to do. This is the particular materials. You can create materials over here, the anisotropic, blin, Lambert, things like that. Uh, I like to go with at least starting with a blin. So I'm just going to click blin. It automatically creates the material for you. It's called blin2. This is our work area where we can turn around and get into our the different uh, m uh, modules and modes and link things up. We're not going to do any of that. We're going to keep this simple. We're just going to be adding in a, di a diffuse, a specular, and a normal map onto this particular model. So we're just going to show you the basics of that. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way. As you can see, this blend texture, it has some default settings. So it already has a little bit of a spec, etc. If you scroll up and down on this, you can see here's the color, here's the bump mapping, and here's our specular. Okay, the specular color. So it's got everything we need, and let's go ahead and just work with that. I'm going to go ahead and change the name on this. I'm just going to call this. Well, I'll just call this uh, wrestler. Just so we aren't worried, having to worry about any copyrights because this is a model I'd done for, for fun and it was for a game, maybe, and it didn't get used. But I like the model, so I'm just going to call it Wrestler 1. All right, so go ahead, let's go ahead and take a look. What we're going to do is any one of these little uh, boxes are what we need to click on to be able to add different maps. Since we need a color map or a diffuse map, we just need to click on that icon for color, okay? So just going to click it. And it brings up our create render node. It's it's saying, what do you want to put into this? Well, we don't want to bulge, we don't want checker, we want a file. We have a texture file, we need this file, so we're gonna go ahead and click texture or click file. We're now into the next step of this. It, it says, What's the image name? Okay, well, we need to add that. To add that, we're gonna get, get to this little uh, folder, little briefcase folder kind of thing. And let's go ahead and navigate. Let's go ahead and get the head bane. We'll start with uh, the, the head of him first. I'm going to go ahead and click open. So that's the texture right now. It's, it's the head and his arms, actually. Let's go ahead and select the head. As you can see, it's two different portions. There's the body, and then there's the head. So we'll go ahead and grab the head. Here is our texture. I'm going to just right click on the texture and hit assign to material okay let me move that out of the way so there you go that's just basic just the diffuse color just set in there it's as simple as possible okay all right let's go ahead and in our panel we're going to go ahead and create another blend and in this case it's going to be called blend three but i'm going to call this wrestler two and hit enter and again we're going to add a color so let's go to our file we're going to add in a file and click our little folder and let's add in the body just so we have the basics in and squared away so I'm selecting the body I'm now going to go to our wrestler 2 right click and assign material to selection I'm going to minimize that for now so that's technically it that's like if that you just want to add color that's it color goes to the right pieces right way so you're fine you're squared away all right now we're going to add in the spec map and the normal map okay so let's go ahead and first on the head we're going to select the little checkerboard next to the bump mapping we're going to add a file 
In this case, it's saying, okay, well, what do you want the, to use this as? We want to use as, and we'll click this little arrow, a tangent space normal. Okay, great. What is the texture, though? So I'm going to click this little arrow here. Got to get to our folder, and we're going to add in our normal map. Okay? So we've got that squared away. Let's go ahead and quickly run down to our specular map. Well, let's go to our specular color. We're going to click the little checkerboard. Again, we're going to add a file. We're going to click our little folder, and we're going to add in the head spec. Technically, nothing has changed, but what you don't know is that we now have the spec map and normal map on, on the head and arms of the model. Let's go ahead and I'm going to, just so you can see, I'm going to double click on our Wrestler 2. Again, let's add in our bump map. So we're going to click the bump map, file. We're going to use as a tangent space normal, just clicking this arrow and moving down. We're going to grab this little, this little icon right here go to our folder we're going to add in our body normal okay we're now going to go to our spec and we need to add in the spec color so we're going to click the little icon the the checkerboard file and let's go to our little folder and we're going to add in our spec map so this is it with the spec map and normal map on it but you really can't see anything. I mean, it really technically hasn't changed because we're looking at this model through the default viewport, the default views in Maya. We want to try and change that so at least we can see what effects our maps and everything are having on this particular model. To do that, all we have to do is click on Renderer, and we'll go to the High Quality Rendering. Okay, see that changed it up appreciably. We can now see our normal map very clearly, very simply on the model. It looks great. We can see all the wrinkles and everything. We can zoom in, see the back, take a look at that. Shoes, etc. Uh, looks good. I think it looks pretty good. And we can turn around and set up lights if we wanted and make those lights move. And we could see it uh, reflect on the model as we're doing it. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just, again, just exploring the material editor just to show you how to set up everything really simply. But the the high quality rendering is the best way for you to see what your model is going to look like with the spec map on. Glow. If you had any glow maps, we could do glow maps, things like that. But this is just the normals, spec, and diffuse. Again, if you want to just turn that off, you can go back. This is what your model looks like with none of that. Quite a difference between the two of them. The, the interesting thing is, is if we turn on the high quality rendering, that doesn't change anything. You know, we can turn around and go to our our uh, shading, and we can have the wireframe on the shading. See, it didn't change our shading. It's still next gen. We can still see all the nice normal map, etc. We just now can see how low poly this is with the low frame, the low wireframe, etc. We can go back to our shading and turn off the wireframe. But there, there's no hit on the viewport. There's no dragging. That's what makes it really great. We can see everything beautifully. Everything looks awesome. And there you go. Pretty simple, pretty quick. Just adding in diffuse normal and spec in our hypershade material editor in Maya. That's, that's really all you need to know as a basic introduction. Anyway, I hope this has been fun for you. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks very much for watching.